Yeah, not at all. I'll, I'll give uh, the summarize. I won't go through the, all the beginning stuff as much. But, you know, essentially I, I had leased this property from this family for, for seven years and I was on it day and night. I mean, constantly, at least 300 days a year I was out there um, doing something, developing it, camping out, uh, whatever. And um, I had actually found where some turkeys were, which I had never found before out there during deer season. And so I went, I found a place I was going to turkey hunt the next turkey season. So I did. I found a nice little clear spot, got it all prepared, and burned it off about a week or so before uh, I'd actually gone out there to hunt. Because turkeys like that. And I think they had actually been in there before I'd come to hunt because I burned it. But I got that particular morning, I got in there early, parked my four-wheeler in the front, walked all the way back in there, 800 yards, uh, right at half a mile back to where I was hunting. And I got set up, and I'm all camoed out, because you got to hide from turkeys. You know, don't even blink, because if they see you, it's over, you know. So I, I get set up, and I'm, I get had gallberry bushes that I had cut and moved out into this clearing, where I'm sitting on this clearing, I always explain it like it's a football field, you know, just to give people a better visual. If you look at this little square like it's a football field, east east to west are end zones, north to south would be sidelines. The south sideline drops off straight off into a creek bottom. It's like a two-tier creek bottom. It drops off into the first level, and then it goes for a little while and drops off into the creek bed. And that kind of wraps all the way around the south and then up. It gradually grades up to the east end zone there around the southeast corner. And I'm sitting in the northwest corner where I can see out, all the way out across. I can see down the north sideline really well. And I stepped it off to the edge. It was 72 feet from where I was because I needed to know, you know, how far my shot was going to be. So I'm sitting there and I, I start to call and call, probably call for the better part of two hours. And I, I can't, it was a beautiful day. When the sun finally did come up, uh, it was a bright, sunny day, March of 07, I don't know, early spring. And I actually got, I'm, I'm hitting this locator, which is something, you know, you shake it. It sounds like a, a young turkey gobbling, and it usually will get bigger gobblers to, to answer back. It's called a locator for that reason. So I'm box call, and I got a chirp in my mouth, and I'm trying to sound all sexy. And, and uh, I finally get, you know, a call back, and it's, it's another Jake or two. I can tell because Jakes don't finish it. They just kind of halfway gobble and then. You know, they don't finish it on out. So at least I'm getting some action, right? And then I finally get where I can see turkeys coming. And I can see them. They're coming all up this wide game trail that's just off the northwest corner. I can see all the way down it until it just fades off down the hill. They're coming up the game trail, and they're coming all through the woods. They're coming up that little shallow grade. And it's a bunch. I can't tell how many it is at this point. But it's a lot of turkeys, a bunch of hens and, and young jakes. So I'm excited. I actually get my gun up and ready. For, they're getting close to coming into this little clear spot I've got. Well, when they get probably 30, 40 feet from coming into the clearing, they stop. And then the ones right there in the front that I could see, they perk their head up and then just gone. They all just exploded out of there to the, to the north, to my left. And I mean, I can see it's about 30 turkeys at this point. And I'm upset, you know, obviously. I couldn't believe they had seen me. You know, I was being pretty still. And about the time that I couldn't hear them anymore, I could hear what sounded like somebody, like footsteps, out across from me in that creek bed, that first tier down there. Because there's it's full of deciduous trees, so there's dead leaves all over the ground. You know, anything walks through there, you're going to hear it. But it sounded slow and like, like two legs. So I stood up and I looked and I didn't really see. At, when I first stood up, I couldn't see. And I remember grabbing the net the mesh that I had over my face and I pulled it down over my chin. And I'm looking and th they, then I realized that the turkeys had a direct line of sight to whoever that is or whatever that is down there. And that's what scared the turkeys off. So now I'm kind of aggravated. And then finally, I get to see who it is. And it's a black guy. And I can see him just about from the top of his shoulders up. I'm looking through thicket. And he's he's looking at me. And I didn't really dawn on me that uh, 
that he knew where I was, but he was looking in my direction anyway. And it's probably 130 feet away through the thicket there. And I'm because he's down, you know, on that second tier. And he looks like he's walking really slow, like he's tired, you know, like he's lumbering. And I, what he would do is come up. He would come up close to the edge and he would snap his head and look at me and then look back where he's going. And he'd snap his head and look, and look back where he's going. So I'll wave my hand at him. Like, I'm right here, you know, don't shoot at me. I won't shoot at you. And then I, th I think I lost him for a minute there. And he had to have walked away from me at some point. Well, while he was doing that, while I could still hear him out there, there there's this huge pine tree behind me. And I plop my back up against it. And I put my right foot up on it like I was cool, you know, like Fonzie. <laughs> and I had my shotgun. I put it, I had a Benelli three and a half inch, 12 gauge automatic, and I had the plug in it, which was abnormal for me. I didn't usually, you know, I was a bit of an outlaw. And that probably just because the gun came with the plug and I never took it out. But I had three shots, high brass number four, turkey shot. And I put it down to my left, hand around the grip, and I put my right hand up over the butt, wrapped around just like a boat paddle. That way, and you know, a non-aggressive, I'm not going to shoot at you position. And I could still hear him. And I, I couldn't tell if he was getting farther away or not, but he had to have. He had to have gone away from me and gone around that point and back up. Because the next time I can really see him, I see him coming up towards me. And, and I'm looking at him, and he doesn't look quite right. I, I still didn't attribute it. You know, to me, it's still a guy. He's about to be up close, and I'm about to know exactly what's going on with this guy. And I'm looking, and it looks like he's wearing camouflage. That's what I thought at the time. I was like, he's wearing camouflage. His arms were dark, but his body looked like he had on some kind of camouflage. He looked like a really fat black dude wearing a bunch of clothes. Like he had on a thick coveralls and maybe like a camouflage vest or something. You know, I'm thinking amateur. You know, it's, this guy's out here hunting. I'm really upset now because if he's wearing camouflage, he's hunting. This amateur out here doesn't know what he's doing. Probably got lost. You know, these are the things that, that, uh, that I'm working out, what am I going to say to him? Because he's coming my way. So I'm I kind, of, kind of paying attention to him, you know, looking around and waiting. Like I said, he's like he's lumbering, like he's slumped over and tired is the impression that I got. Well, about eight feet down that southeast corner, there were two pine trees, 10-inch pine trees, 25 feet tall, half grown, maybe three feet apart from each other. And the one on the inside, uh, closest to, to the west, he gets about 10 feet maybe away from it. And then he reaches his hand out to grab it. And I, that was the first real moment that I noticed something was not right. Because I could see, I didn't know what I was looking at, but I could see the skin, the dark gray skin on the inside of his arm. The hair was not as thick on the inside of his bicep. But his forearm was huge, like, a, like an NFL football, was massive. Still didn't register that this is anything other than a person, but it looks funky. It looks weird. So he reaches out and he grabs that tree and he pulled himself right up to it. And then as soon as he did, he put that tree right in his shoulder and he stood up and squared up. And when he stood up, he looked a whole lot bigger than he did when he was walking up. I mean, still, he looked like he was a big dude. This was something different. And there was kind of a, a few seconds there. It's this moment of transition because immediately he opens his mouth and starts making the most unnerving sound I'd ever heard in my life. It sounded like multiple sets of vocal cords. And he was, I could tell he was angry. He was really upset. Well, at this point, I know exactly what it is. This is a Sasquatch. This is what everybody's been seeing in the woods and calling a Sasquatch. Well, I'm completely and totally freaked out now. I mean, I can, I can feel the blood rush from my face and I can feel, I, I, I describe it as a true sinking feeling like dread, like somebody's just poured a bucket of cold water over your head and you're just, Oh, you know, like, Oh, <laughs> it's this. Well, he's making this noise and it sounds like, language because it's got form and syntax it's like syllables but it's not anything i can understand and he would get really loud he would get i mean 
and then mumble and then get loud again well i'm completely like i said petrified and i have my i'm still in this position and what what i thought was camouflage looks like mud he had mud it didn't have it on his arms or his face but it was all over his right side and a little a little bit across his chest and he had leaves and twigs in his hair. I mean, his hair was matted up. I could see his, his dark gray skin, which was lighter than his face. His face was just black and I could see all that. And I mean, I just, I knew that this had to be what this is. And he wasn't all muscled up, you know, like Schwarzenegger up. He was barrel shaped, um, like Paul white, big show, the wrestler. Built just like that, except his head is not sitting up. His head is sitting down in front of his shoulders. And he's maybe six, six, nine, six, ten, could be seven foot. I don't think he was over that because I'm six, four. And he was just about as tall as me uh, standing down that grade. And he's 80 feet away. I know it's 72 feet to the edge. He's another eight, 10 feet down there. So I see everything clearly. You know, there's sage grass, about two foot tall sage grass in front of him so i can't see a lot of his legs i can see a little i don't really notice genitals or anything like that but he's got his he's holding on to this tree and he's bitching at me you know that's what it feels like i guess i don't know i didn't i knew i wasn't gonna run i I knew better i guess than to do that and i don't even know if i could have moved at that point but i think i just i got the nerve to just want to get my hand down on the grip and all this is happening in just a few seconds so i start to ease my hand down to get it on the grip of the gun and when he saw that he didn't like it he got really upset he started rocking back and forth i mean really fast rocking back and forth and he blew at me like it, it wasn't a yell it was just like oh, like no you know you're not putting your hand on that gun he, he saw what i was doing well, I think just about the time I got my hand on the grip is when I felt it because it shook me. It shook my spine. It shook my liver. And it startled me. And I guess that was enough for me to move. And I took about three or four quick steps off into that clearing, still looking at him. And I got ready. My gun still pointed at the ground. I didn't point it at him. But I'm there. If he's coming at me, I'm going to be able to shoot him, hopefully hurt him. And then reload while I'm running. You know, this is one of the things that went through my mind. So how am I going to kill this thing? I, you know, I'm going to have to fight this thing all the way out of here if I'm going to make it out. Because he's that upset with me. Well, now that I'm out from under the limbs, the, the tree that I was leaning against, now I can see the top of the tree that he's holding on to. And it's whipping back and forth. I mean, three people couldn't have done what he was doing to this tree. And he wasn't shaking it. He was just rocking back and forth and still holding on to it. So it was inadvertent. He wasn't just trying to shake this tree. I don't think, I think he could have pulled it up and threw it at me, but that really, that really scared me. I think that was one of the, one of the more terrifying parts was moments of this, of all this was seeing him do that and, and seeing just how powerful this, this thing is. And the size of his forearm was so much bigger than his bicep. He was just really, really misproportioned barrel shaped, body he was as wide at his hips as he was at his shoulders he was just straight up and down so i thought it was a fat person but essentially i thought this was just a big 400 pound you know probably six foot three six foot four black dude you know that was out here lost but seeing what it is now i'm mortified completely so i'm still standing there and he stops rocking back and forth he rolls his lips back and showed all of his teeth and stuck his tongue straight out through his teeth, just at a point, straight out. Not at me, but just out. And I, could, I could, got a good look at his teeth then. He had long canines on top and bottom. Not really long, but still longer than his other teeth. And then he had a gap right in his two front teeth, like Michael Strahan gap. So that, that happened. He went back. He stopped the rocking. He did that. He did that little mumble growl, uh, maybe for a couple more seconds. And then he stopped. He took his hand off the tree and he turned his body to the right. I don't even, didn't even, to me, I don't, it didn't seem like he had moved his feet at all. He just turned his body and he cocked his head to the side like a dog. Like he's, he didn't turn his head. He cocked it to the side. 
while he was quartered to me. Never took his eyes off me. He was looking across his shoulder and down his nose at me. And he took probably three or four steps toward that game trail. I could still see him really clearly. But it was still some still thicket there. But I could still see him very clearly. And then he turned and walked dead away from me through the thickest stuff out there where I couldn't see him. And I could still hear him very intently walking away. It wasn't like he was trying to sneak off. He was taking big steps and walking away. And I'm watching. I'm trying to get, you know, I'm still trying to look. And I keep looking to my left because it feels like there's something Something's telling me to look to my left because there's still some pretty thick stuff right pretty close to me where I was. So he gets, I'd say he gets probably 50, 60 feet down into the bottom. I think he's probably all the way down in that bottom. And that's when he yelled. And when he yelled, it sounded like, I describe it as a whip because it was very abrupt. It was a buildup and then stop. Just wow. And, but it was so loud and, and powerful. I mean, once that happened, there was not another sound in the woods. And then once he did that, the, why he did that, maybe it's because I was still standing there. I don't know. But I still stood there for quite a while, at least a couple of minutes, maybe, maybe not quite that long. But it seemed like a long time because I didn't want to turn my back on him. I didn't want to because I had to leave going the other direction. So finally, I can... I start to feel myself breathing and taking long, deep breaths. I start to feel my heartbeat and I'm starting to get this like tunnel vision, uh, like heat on the periphery, which my wife, Linda, told me later. Adrenaline will do that to you. It'll, it'll give you that kind of uh, that kind of tunnel vision. So I'm pretty sure that's what was happening. But that was the point where I decided, OK, I'm, I turned around and I grabbed my backpack. I walked over and grabbed my backpack. And I left everything else laying there and I took, took a few steps and I stopped and I was going to take the plug out and put two more in it. But I, I decided, no, I don't want to get caught in that position. So I took three shells out of my pocket and put them in my left hand and walked out. I would take really short, quick steps and stop and listen to see if I heard anything following me. We did this the whole way out. And I never I don't remember a ton of the way out. I remember doing a lot of praying, uh, made, made a lot of promises to the good Lord that I've kept to this day promised I'd never kill another animal for any reason, not intentionally. I've kept that one. Um, if he would get me out of here, you know, fought soul praying, obviously, but there was still this one place that I was worried about getting by because I always got creeped out there. And I'm, as I'm walking out, all these things are coming back to me, you know, that had happened. I'm like, this is, these things have been out here around me the whole time. That's what this has been, you know, that I'm thinking the voices that I've heard, was that which I thought were people coming down the road talking that I'm yelling at. This was them, you know, and nothing else made any sense until you add them to the equation. But I get past this part, this part and uh, I'm good. And I, it turns and goes up a hill and about 200 feet. There's my four wheeler. Well, I get to the crest of this hill and it's starting to open up. I can see my four wheeler. I can see the road and I'm starting to feel a lot better about making it out. So I stopped and I stopped and I turned around to look. And the second I stopped, I mean, as soon as I got turned around, I heard that very distinctive tree break. It was either a tree or a tree limb, but it was fresh because it was that crackle pop. Because I, I heard that k -k 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 and it yeah. sounded like a, a rifle going off. And that's the point where I ran. I ran. I got on my four wheeler and another very terrifying moment was not being able to go forward. I remember this so vividly getting on my four wheeler and putting my, my shotgun across me, across in front of my legs. But I, the way I parked, I couldn't go forward. I had to back up toward where this tree break was to get out. And I just knew, you know, this was, I made it this far and now he's got me, but I did, I made it and I drove down the road, you turn left to go to the house. Uh, pushed my folder up next to the house where I would normally load my four wheeler up. I pushed it up. I got to my truck, grabbed my seven millimeter Magnum rifle out of the back. I made sure it was loaded because it usually was. And I sat there for 15, 20 minutes at least watching that tree line because I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could drive. I think even when I did drive away, finally, 
I might have done 40 down interstate. And I, I, I do remember breaking down a few times. Uh, but just remembering all of these strange things that I had gone through out there uh, over the years and running into these things, just not knowing what it was, you know, it's always attributing it to, uh, to something else. He had, his head was shaped like a football. He had a very pronounced crest and a really long face, very large round ball like cheeks. His nose was, was kind of wide, but it was pointed, but it was pointed down like Scotty Pippen I always said, if, if you want to look at what his nose looks like, it looks like Scotty Pippen's nose and really, really wide mouth. Um, no forehead, his, and I don't know if it was cause he was angry at me, but he's had like diamond shaped brow, like really, uh, high on the outside and you know to a point but i don't know if it's like i said because he was just acting like he was mad at me or whatever but he had no forehead his hairline started right there above his really pronounced brow i couldn't see his eyes uh that i can remember i don't remember seeing his eyes because it was just dark you know that deep set eyes um really really white teeth at least they were white in contrast to the rest of him because his face was so dark black like it was grease paint shiny shiny black leather looking face and yeah just looked like a person essentially i mean he's ugly obviously he wasn't the prettiest guy in the world but you know when you don't have a frame of reference for anything else this is what my yeah. brain is telling me this is it's a person until obviously all the rest of the signs added up 